إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We'll take some examples on shirk in this matter, on dua al-ibadah, which is all other forms of ibadah. First one, which would be A, for example, is shirk in your intention, in one's intention or purpose. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَةً وَفِّي لَيْمَ عَمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ Whoever desires the life, this life, in this world, and its glitter, and what that which it has, we shall give them in full. In this life, and they will have nothing in the life after. This shirk is found in the munafiqeen, whose nifaq is not, we're not talking about the minor nifaq, the major nifaq. This shirk is found in the munafiqeen, the major nifaq, nifaq akbar. No one appears as a Muslim to the public yet has no Islam in his heart except a munafiq major nifaq. They are the hypocrites in the principle of the iman, not in the details or minor stuff. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا In Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, when they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِ When they go back to the shayateen, they, they tell their friends, we are with you. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ These are the hypocrites in the principle of لا إله إلا الله. The major hypocrisy. Some of them may be even hypocrites in details as well. Some of those who fall under this shirk in niyyah, who are hypocrites in the major hypocrisy, also may have shirk in details of ibadah. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَأُخَادِعُونَ إِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَا لَا يُرَاؤُنَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا سورة النِّسَاء The hypocrites seek to deceive Allah, but he, he is the one who deceives them. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ When they stand up for salah, they stand up with laziness and to be seen and to be noticed. These are the people who are classified a combo classification of shirk munafiqin. They have a combo classification. Their shirk, but their shirk also has an effect to it, an aspect of the major effect to it. That's the overall picture of shirk in niya. But there's some notes that one should know under the shirk of niya. One of those notes, some Muslims perform deeds and seek by doing the deeds the sake of Allah. They're Muslims on Tawheed. They seek for Allah. But his reward that he wants for that, he wants for that, is something in this life. He wants possibly wealth. He wants protection. He wants a happy life. He wants a cure for a child. That's his soul. That's his object. Uh, he's doing it for the sake of Allah. But his soul is not reward and this. His soul is to do it for this matter. The ruling on that is one is given his reward in thawab in this life. He wants a low worldly matter, no matter how high one might think it is. He gets the reward in this life. He did not do it for other than Allah. Otherwise, it would be major shirk. But his full intention was for Allah. But he wants the reward for some worldly matter totally. Totally. His total reward, he wants to be recompensated in this life. That's one form. One note. A second note is worse than the first, which is one who does that, but not for something in return in this life, to show off. And this falls under, this is the shirk al-azhar that we talked about last week. And we spoke about it at the, at the end of last week. And I want to stay focused on our topic, which is shirk al-uluhiyyah, the major shirk. But I have to pin, pinpoint to these uh, little matters so you get the understanding of the major shirk. A third note is, those who do deeds for wealth, for profit. For example, they go make hajj to make money. They go do hajj on the behalf of others to make money. To migrate from one area to another, not for the sake of Allah, but to marry a woman. These are somewhat wiser than the previous category because at least they got some money out of it. The one who did it envy, who did it for merely talk. But all that falls under 
shirk al azhar he gets his deeds in this life. The fourth one is deeds sincerely for Allah. No deficiency in it. Sincerely for the Allah. But that person has a matter or a status in which he's on a major shirk in it. Like one who says, for example, Isa is the son of Allah. Ta'ala Allah an thalika aluwan kabira. Then he gives charity or does some good for the sake of Allah. They have deeds that are genuinely, truly for the sake of Allah. But they're on, on a status of major shirk. Or like those who become apostates and then do deeds for some kind of minor deed for the sake of Allah. They may get rewarded with wealth, kids, happy life, fame, whatever may be. There's nothing in the life after. A fifth note on this matter. If one does salah, zakah, hajj, seek in the life after, and then did some matters for this dunya. You know, some matters he, he, he did uh, to show. He's whatever ends up more in the balance on the scale. And we also, I refer you to last week's class on minor shirk. That falls under minor shirk. The difference between shirk akbar and shirk azgar is major shirk. Shirk al-akbar, one be in hell forever and it demolishes his deen. Minor shirk for a believer demolishes the deed. One demolishes the deed, one demolishes the deed.